How lofts work, a quick summary. I'm not going to get into the fine details of how lofts build geometry. I'm just going to give you an overview uh, to give you a, an idea of the concept of how lofts work. So let's start off with, I'm going to show you how uh, most NURBS tools build geometry. Then we'll talk about how lofts build geometry. And then I'm going to discuss with you a uh, concept I have of how lofts are similar to uh, computer animation. So how most NURBS tools build geometry. The, this cube geometry is strictly controlled by the sketch and extrusion feature. Uh, the, the width, the depth, uh, the length, they're all input by the user. So there's no uh, variation in the geometry. Uh, same with this uh, revolution. The, the uh, diameters, the lengths are controlled by the sketch. The uh, revolve feature controls how, it, is it a full revolve or half? It's completely controlled you, by the user. You have complete control over the, the size of this feature, of this geometry. Now in this sweep, uh, it has an organic shape, but even here the geometry is strictly controlled by the sketch, path, and taper you have direct control over everything that's happening on the, in this um, in this part, in this shape. How lofts build geometry. Lofts interpret sketches and builds geometry between those sketches. You can see here uh, in the model that it is creating the geometry on its own based on the sketch that you've created. It will automatically build guide rails based on the geometry in those sketches. Do you see these green lines here? These are the automatically generated guide rails. Now you can build your own guide rails to replace those auto-generated ones, but even then you're only controlling, the only time you have direct control over that shape is when it passes through that sketch or if it's attached, that point where it's attached to that guide rail. Otherwise everything in between is being created by the loft. Now you can influence the shape of the geometry by using conditions that add weight and angles between sketches. On the conditions tab in the loft, you can add weight or you can add angles and that'll change the shape a little bit based on your input. And also you can choose to alter the map points of the auto-generated guide rails. Then when you get into more complicated uh, uh, lofts, you'll have to do this. It won't choose the right points and you'll have to manually choose it. Now let me discuss my concept of uh, lofts as computer animation. This is an example of traditional 2D hand-drawn animation. The bouncing ball was animated by using the hand-drawn cells on the left. Every movement of the ball was dictated by the artist when the ball was drawn. It's not being interpreted by any computer program. Every, every uh, elongation of the ball is drawn by hand. And let me start up this video for you. Now, when it comes to CGI software, it creates animation based on models and parameters input by the animators. But the artists do not dictate every individual moving object in every scene. Instead, the CGI software interprets the animator's input and generates all the individual animations in every scene. So there isn't a single point where an animator is drawing any of the cells in this animation. They're all being created by the by the computer. And that's why I kind of think of it as like as loft because you're not controlling everything in that shape. You're you're influence you're directly controlling it at the sketches and the guide rails if you build your own guide rails and you can influence it with the, the conditions, but you're not actually building every single bit of that loft. The next video will be the last video of this module. It's going to be a quick demonstration of a uh, very simple shape that I will create. It's just to help you get familiar with the uh, loft environment.